Hey guys, Aaron. So we just did eight skill builders, two months worth of dynamic components. And we just jumped into a little bit in each week and just talked about how skill builders work. And that was awesome. It was great. You guys had great feedback, great input. I really appreciated it. We had a couple questions come in that seemed like they'd be nice. They seemed like, they seemed like good ideas when I saw them. But as I dug in a little bit, they were potentially would the kind of thing that would maybe cause a problem or two if you actually tried to use it. So I wanted to do a quick video showing how not to make a dynamic component. Now it'll be all negative, so I'm gonna put a couple positive things in here, things you could do with dynamic components, but I want to address these because there are two things specifically that came up with welcome to dynamic component number six that you could follow in the hopes of making it easier to make dynamic components, but it may end up kind of biting you if you did. So with that, let's go ahead and hop right in. Okay, here I have the original geometry from dynamic component number six. Uh, this was the one where we made a frame that resized. We had six pieces, each of the corners and the edges. Um, each of these became a component and then they were all sized together with attributes. So the first thing, let's start with a positive note. Here's a way you could actually save a little bit of time. So right here when I have this as all raw geometry, this is where I could do a shift erase to get rid of my edges rather than waiting to the very end when I have all the geometry done. I just did that at the end because that's when I thought to tell you guys about it, but there's no reason not to just clean this up beforehand and have everything merge together. I only did two of them, and I'm going to actually draw another line real quick. I'm going to draw a line that goes from this corner across to this corner. Two suggestions came up specific to this. One was, why not just make two components? One for the corner, Oop. create, and one for the side. I think the idea here was that it's going to save time because I don't have to set the attributes quite as often. So, all right, that was good. We create those two pieces and I'm get rid of this and all this and all this. I left these two pieces because another question that came up was, couldn't you use a radial array to make these pieces around? You guys are paying attention. I do like using radial arrays. So let's see what happens when I grab these two. This is the middle point of the frame option. Rotate it 90 degrees, type 3x, and I get all of my copies. All right, so let's talk about that first. So before we go in here and actually start creating our component, I want to look at what that array, that radial array did. So if I look at my, my axes of the world, I got red going this way, green going this way, blue, of course, going up. So on these first two pieces, my axes match that. But look what happens as soon as I get to this one. Now, red's going this way and green's going this way because I took that and rotated it. Up here, I got the same thing but flipped 180 degrees, but green's going the same way. Down here, it's what, 270 degrees, it's rotated around. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing. This is not to say that this is a problem, this isn't going to destroy your component or anything like that, but it's something you have to keep in mind. I can't assume that everything is going to be the same red green axes because rotate actually changed that for each. Now I can't come in here and reset this either because it is a component. If I change it to go, you know, right here and then match the world axes, that's going to go back and change each of the four pieces because they are tied together being as they are components. Again, like I said, in and of itself, it's not a bad thing, but if you do use something like rotate to place pieces, you do have to keep an eye after they're placed because you can't assume the axes are the same anymore. All right, enough, enough of that. Let's get in here and see if we can save some time by having these be components rather than each individual. I'm going to grab the whole thing, make component, call it another frame. Again, and if I come in here now, here's the first issue with using components. Look at the names. So before I had 
you know, bottom left, left, top left, top right, going around so I could actually just see from their name where, where they were. This makes it a little bit more difficult because they're all called the same thing. But again, this is how components work. They're all connected together. It's going to make some stuff easier and some stuff harder. So let's, let's do easy first. I'm going to go to one of the corners. I don't know which corner this is because they're all called the same. The only way I'm actually going to know what, which corner this is is by adding an attribute, changing it, and seeing what updates. So first, I'm going to back up. I'm going to add my, my high-level attributes. So I'm going to type in uh, width for one. I'm going to add an attribute for height. And then I think I had one called uh, rail size. And I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to say add as a text box and report back to me in inches. So this isn't something new. This is the same thing I, I did in, oh man, I don't know, three or four, maybe six <laughs> different values or different videos. So uh, same thing we've seen before, just the highest level component uh, attributes that the user is going to go ahead and have the ability to modify. All right, so once I, once I set those, I have the ability to change them. I'm going to type in values again, 36 tall. We'll do a four inch rail and then we'll make it uh, 24 inches wide. All right, so obviously nothing changed because nothing is tied to those attributes, but I do now have values in here. So this is going to be a little bit easier to work with. All right, let's go set up a corner. So my corner is kind of easy because it does need a value for the X and the Y. So I'm going to come in here and say length X, length Y, and both of these are going to be equal to whatever my rail size value is. Enter equals rail size, enter. All right, and this is the time saver. Look at that, they all changed. Yay, small victory. That's kind of nice. If I come back in here, look, actually look at this. If I drop my corners, they all got the same value. I can't change this. This is always going to be the same. So this is a potential, mm, what do we want to call it? A potential issue, something you could run into, is the fact that each of these pieces is going to get the same value. So if there was a spot where maybe the, the bottom section was supposed to be taller or something like that because there was a plate on there or something like that, I couldn't do that if all, they were all the same. But as it is right now, no problem. Let's look at the side. So with the side, we want to add both values also, length x, length y. If I look at, oops, if I look at that, so my, my short length, this one, is the one I want to set equal to this value, enter, awesome. Length x, I want to set equal to, uh, this one's going to go this direction, so that's going to be equal to the height, minus rail size minus rail size. Remember, because it's, it's the overall height minus these two corner pieces, enter. Ooh, you see, I had a little, had a little adjustment there. I'm going to make that value a little bit bigger just so we can see it. So I'm going to take this up to maybe 40 inches. Do you see that? All the pieces changed. So here's our first real issue, is the fact that because these pieces are the same, they're all going to be the same length, which is an issue because I want to make this adjustable by height and by width. So if I was to back up, how could I fix this? Well, I could have one component for the sides and then a separate component for the tops and use different values. As it is now, this means I'm really going to have to create a square frame. I can't make a rectangular frame using the setup I have right now. Not a big deal. We will adjust. I'll just get rid of this value and uh, yeah, we're just going to have a square frame. I'm going to make this work. I'm, I'm determined to. All right, so now we have to put these pieces where they go. So I want to take this rail right here and slide it down here. But again, I don't know which rail this is. I don't know which piece labeled side this one is. So how do I find out? Well, unfortunately, 
it's really not simple. And this is one of the reasons it's maybe not great to use this. What I have to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to pick this piece, and I'm going to go add an attribute for, this is the length along here, so I'm going to say position on the Y. And I'm going to hard code it to something. I'm just going to type in 8, enter. That one moved down. If I click out of this now, I can go down my sides, check my sides, and find the side that says it's at 8 down. Okay, there it is. So why does it not say 8? Well, because I didn't type equals 8 when I hit enter, it moved it down 8 in the attribute, and then the value it actually showed me was relative to my global axis, which is apparently 37 inches this way. All right, but what I've got now is this piece. So I know what I want to do is I want that to be equal to the rail size. And that's going to put it, put it up against there. Okay, so how come when I added a length and uh, for X and Y, why did they all change? And when I changed the position, only that one piece changed. Well, this is how components work. If I change something that happens inside the component, that's updated to affect all of them. So when I change something like the size or scale of something, they're all going to change. The location, this position, actually happens on the outside of the component. So this is going to have to be set for each of these pieces. So when I come up here to set this piece, again, I got to pick on it to find where it is. And I'm going to have to come in here and add a Y height. So I'm going to say this is equal to 45, enter, and then come back out. And oop, there it is. It was the one I, one I had. Uh, and that one's going to be actually equal to the height, enter. So now I can work my way around. So this one up here, I'm going to want to add attributes for both X and for Y. Right, because I tell it how far over it is. So I want it to be, I'm just going to say it's equals to 8 over, and then my height, I'll go equals 45, just to get a value in there. So when I come back out, I can go find it. There we go. And this is going to be equal to rail size, enter. And this one's going to be equal to height, enter. All right, so let me go real quickly, update all of these. Okay, so there we go. Whew. That was a lot more mental work than I was prepared for, I'll be totally honest with you. So now if I come in here and I change this to 36, enter, the whole thing shrinks. If I change my rail size, let's say put it back up to 6, the whole thing grows. So it works for a symmetrical piece, but there's really no way, I, I, I guess there is a way you could do the, I don't know, I, it's possible. If, if you can make this work, let me know. T tell me how you made it work and uh, maybe link to a file on the, on the 3D warehouse. Get that file up there. I would love to see this made with just two because I don't know how you could set both height and width without causing yourself some level of brain damage to make that whole thing work. I say that, you know how I feel about math though, so maybe one of you better mathers out there can make that work. This is not to say that this could not happen, of course. I love when people push what, what software can do. It's one of my favorite pastimes myself. But really, in this situation, I don't know that I saved any time by rotating and making just two components rather than the eight. I mean, there was a little bit of time saved, but I think I lost that time in simplicity of placing them after they were already in the component. But let me know what you think. Do you think you guys think that was better? Was that faster to use two components rather than eight? Did you like the radial array rather than actually just copying pieces and, and copying the geometry first and then making components? Personally, I would have to defer back to the way I did it in number six rather than this. I don't think that was much of a time saver, but 
it was good to explore it and it was a good comment. I really appreciate that. If you don't already, go ahead and click subscribe down below. That way you'll be notified every time a video like this comes out. We do a couple videos a week around here and you'll get a notification if you're subscribed. If you liked it, go ahead and click like. Always appreciate the positive feedback. And most importantly, do leave a comment. Uh, if you have something specific to the one we just looked at, or if you have some other dynamic component related idea, or if you just have a good idea for you, something you think would make a cool skill builder, leave that down below. We like making these videos, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.